Yeah. Why you ain't say nothing then? You were supposed to, you supposed to say something where on Hamilton? I was I was down there for a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It feels so good to be back. Your boy had like a month off, bro. I've been on my grind just to one. Live it out. We gonna keep say what's nice and light just to hear it out. out for the first. Everybody first knows me. Really that's that's the here. Old me. Going through some changes right here and now. <clears throat> I've been on my grind just to And we are back with another episode of the Dope Individuals Only Podcast. I'm Eric. I'm the only dope individual here today, but it's still gonna be a good one, man. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Woo, 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 woo. For all my niggas who made it to 20, uh, 2024, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm glad for you guys to be here with me, with us, you know what I'm saying? For all the people we lost in 2023, um, you know, my condolences to everybody out there. And, and, you know, just appreciate life, you know. Not everybody's blessed to to be able to get to the next year every year. You know, we're going to lose people along the way. So it matters that we're, we're, we're taking... Um, the time to reflect, taking the time to be great, uh, be gracious for for what we have, you know what I mean, and appreciating the time that we have with the people that we love. Um, you know, Allentown the past couple of days been going a little crazy. The uh, the past couple of days, just two two days into the new year, some some older woman and her grandchild got got murdered by some dude. Like, you know what I mean? We we can't kick the year off starting like that. We need more positivity, more love be, being pushed out into the world. So. You know what I mean? Make sure that you're a beacon of light for the people in your life, uh, for the people in your community, you know what I'm saying? And, and push love first. Um, but on a more on a more exciting note, you know what I'm saying? We did make it to this motherfucker. We made it to 2024, bro. Like, it's crazy. I'm in my last, I'm in my, this is my second to last year of my, of my 20s. Like, I'm on the cusp of 30, bro. In six months, I turned 29. And then that's it for my 20s. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit's nuts. My wife just turned 29 years old. And we're sitting here. And she's like, this is her last year of her 20s. You know, she turns 30 this upcoming December. And it's funny because her birthday is on December 30th. And the 31st is New Year's Eve. And then the day after that, she right back. Like, like she only gets basically two days to, like, really enjoy being whatever age she just turned right after that she got to prepare in a couple months her next birthday's coming up and she's about to change to the next age you know what i'm saying so it seems like it seems like as soon as she turned 29 she's already preparing to be 30 because as soon as she turns 29 the fucking year turned over and this year she turns 30 it's nuts um yeah about to be an old head bro about to be an old head Listen, that's why that's why I'm doing certain things in my life now so that way I can prepare for when I'm actually an old head. Niggas ain't trying to be all all tight and and broken down and hurting every day when they get out of bed. Niggas is trying to trying to be healthy, you know what I mean? Like I got young kids. I want to be able to move around and run around with them for for a long time. Um, so taking care of my body, taking care of my health, uh putting that shit on the forefront is something that's uh, hella prevalent for this upcoming year. It's been in smaller ways since last year. I already got the the ball rolling, started building the foundation and everything. So this year is just all about like uh, fine tuning those things. You know what I mean? Like last year I was in in the house fucking doing calisthenics and stuff like that, and then I broke uh, broke a bone in my elbow, so that slowed it down. But like. I'm able to do push-ups again. I've been able to do push-ups for about a month now, and I've been doing push-ups. I can't do as many as I used to because the elbow's still healing, but it's it, the the work is going to get done. Your boy's getting a, a dad bod, so I got to start hitting the sit-ups and things like that. I pulled the weights out the, out the uh, closet last week, you know what I mean, during our winter cleaning and everything. So um, health is definitely on the forefront. Health is definitely on the forefront. Um, but I want to kick things off. I know I was just on a tangent or whatever, but, uh, I felt like I had to get that out. So let me live. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about last year. Um, last year was, was crazy. You know what I mean? This show has been running since October, I believe October of 2022. Big shout out to me. Big shout out to me because, um, I got to pat myself on the back, give myself a round of applause because most podcasts stop after about seven episodes. 
I'm 45 episodes in. And even though I've taken like a month off twice, um, I've... I was always getting back to the work. I'm back to work right now. You know what I'm saying? But like I needed those breaks. I needed those breaks to recalibrate. I needed those breaks to reorganize. I needed those breaks to um, figure out who, what type of messages I want to push out on the show. So the breaks were vital. Um, It wasn't me just being a lazy sack of shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, But it feels so fucking good to be back because there has been a lot of things that has changed since the last time we spoke. Um, I went back to therapy. Ooh, your boy went back to therapy. Um, no, I wasn't like on the verge of like, or nothing like that, but, um, life got heavy, life got heavy and I was struggling to deal with it. And I was like, you know, before I start tearing down everything, um, I, it might not need to be like that. I might just need somebody who can give me a different perspective than the way that I typically see and operate within the world. Um, so I went back to therapy. That feels good. I actually got to schedule my appointment because I, I canceled a couple weeks ago and then he went on vacation. But um, for anybody out there contemplating it, I know it's not a big thing in the black community, but everybody needs somebody to talk to, especially if you done been through some shit in your life in which I have, in which many of the people that I'm close to have. So um, don't let people discourage you from going out there and, and talking to somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's better to talk to somebody than you let that that anger, depression, frustration, whatever you're dealing with um, build up and then you explode and you lose yourself um, because you just haven't been, you know, maintaining your emotions uh, somewhat. So get back out there. Um, I finally got all the stuff ready for the book. Uh, that has been a process. I've been stalling. I've been getting in my own way. Uh, I'll be honest, a little bit of self-sabotage, um, of just like contemplating, like, is, are people going to buy the book? Are, are people going to want to read it? Uh, you know, did I, did I make the book long enough? It is what it is. My book is 46 pages long. I believe it's 46. It's like 46, 42 pages long. Um, and it's a compilation of 10 stories from my life. And what I've learned from those stories, they were very impactful for my for this short time that I've been here on Earth. Um, but I'm 28 and I've accomplished a lot in the, in those 28 years. And this is only the beginning. This is only the foundation, like I said. So, um, you know, if you want to get a little bit more insight than what you get from the music that I put out over the years, um, from this podcast, from social media posts and things like that, you really get an in-depth look into uh, my life, where I come from, what my upbringing was like, and how I got to where I am today. Um, so, yeah, man, my book is called It's Happening For You, um, 27 Years of Lessons. Like I said, it's a compilation of 10 stories, 10 short stories of my life um, and and how they impacted me and how they uh, still impact me to this day. Yo, I appreciate you joining the live. What's up, man? Um, but, yeah, my book will be dropping uh s- I'm about to say September, September what? Um, January 29th, January 29th. It'll be available everywhere. Amazon, um, freaking, I'm trying to get it into Target. I'm working on, I'm, I'm working on Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Like the book is going to be everywhere, but the easiest place to buy it will definitely be Amazon for the people that live here in the 610. What's up everybody joining? How you doing, baby? Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, for the people that live in the city of Allentown, I'll make I'm um, I'm gonna be having books, uh, physical books to sell as well, and you'll see me around the town, uh, pushing the books and things like that. So, uh, sent a request to be in your live video. <laughs> Here, go live. Oh, I can't do that right now, baby. I can't. Um, but thank you. I appreciate it. Fucking. So where was I? Yeah. Um, my book is gonna be out. January 29th this year. It's going to be available right in my bio. It'll be on my personal stuff. It'll be on the podcast page. Um, All you have to do is use the link tree. Now I got something to say. (laughs) Um, It'll be on the link tree, everything like that. I'm going to keep you guys posted. Actually, give me one second. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. I think I got one in my book bag. I've been carrying it around for people who want to see it's a little beat up now, but this is what it looks like. It's happening for you. It's a short book, like I said. It's a compilation of uh, 10 stories from my life and things like that. 
it's the cover inside cover page and things like that but yeah man like it, it feels so good to have accomplished something and then be on the cusp of being able to give it to the world um i feel really good about that i've i never thought i would write a book i never thought i would write a book However, it was right up my alley as far as writing music. I love to write papers and things like that. So um, why not? Why not? And uh, it felt so good to be able to unpack things that like I had a very hard time telling anybody, including my wife. You know what I'm saying? Um, and she's a big reason for this book even happening because, you know, she she gave me the she helped give me the strength um, to be able to not fear the fact that people might see me differently because what they read in my book. Um, but at the end of the day, like it is what it is. That's my story. Like it, like it or not, you know, it is what it is. And I, I highly recommend this. I talk to my mom about this all the time. Um, like she'd be like, yo, I had a crazy life. I should document it. And I tell people like everybody got a story, literally my entire podcast. Look, it literally says, share your story right here. Share your story. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody got a story. Everybody got something impactful that they went through, something that they learned along the way, some type of expertise they can give the people. And, and these stories deserve to be heard. Um, and you don't got to be famous. Everybody thinks like, unless you're famous or you got a million dollars sitting in your bank account, whatever the case may be, I don't want to hear what you got to say. That's fine. That's fine. But even the man that stands out there on the corner got a story. He's standing out there on the corner because he done been through something in his life, whether it be drugs, whether it be he's a veteran, whether it be um, he had a really tough childhood and he never learned the skills that he needed to to pull himself out of the rut, whatever. But everybody got a story. And I love to hear people's stories and I love to be the person to help them share those stories and give them to the world. You know what I'm saying? So um, this is my story. This is my story right here. It's happening for you. 27 years of lessons. Big shout out to my man, Darius Foster. He did the cover. Don't worry about this strip here. That will not be on your book, I promise. These are just the, the test books to make sure that all the copy, um, all the copies look good and all the printing is correct. On the back, I got a little biography and a picture of myself for the people who don't know me. Um, I should, I'm going to do another photo shoot. Cause like, this is when I first got locks, as you can see, like you can barely even see these bitches, but like you see them now they shake it, they shake it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm all over the place. Um, I, for the thing that I wanted to cover today, I had new year review. Uh, you know, matter of fact, I'm actually on pace, so whatever. But, um, so yeah, I got the book rolling. Um, not only that, some things I wanted to do to reorganize the, uh, podcast, make the podcast look a little bit more official, uh, official to me. It's official to y'all. I know it's official to y'all, but, um, more official to me, something more like, uh, what I had always pictured and hoped for. I'm actually getting a bunch of text messages. So we're going to go do not disturb. All right, there we go. I had to turn on Do Not Disturb. I started getting mad messages. But um, as you can see right behind me, I got a banner made. Shout out to my man, uh, T.O. the designer, Tony Ortiz. He runs I Will Not Lose podcast. That's my man's right there. I appreciate him. Um, he's been very helpful with the knowledge, equipment, all type of stuff. And my man helped me out get a banner for the podcast. I know you can't really see it on the live like that because I'm kind of sitting in front of it. But on the YouTube video, you will be able to see it clear as day. But on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it it got it got everything you need for the podcast. So um, thank you again, uh, Tony. I appreciate it, bro. Um, another thing that I did was for the people who who've been hitting me up, I've been getting a lot of traction, which is really fucking awesome because I put a lot of time, effort and elbow grease into this shit. Shout out to my man, Staffa, because he was very integral within the first couple months of me um of me getting the show off the uh, off the ground and him sharing the information he got and investing his time and energy to help me learn how to fucking do the videos, doing the videos for me, handling the audio and everything like that. Can't wait till my boy jump back on the uh, on the podcast and you know what I mean rejoins the team. But he got real life shit going on. But you know, big shout out to my man Stafa. Um, yeah, man. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Okay, so yeah, for the people who have been hitting me up to get on the podcast, anybody interested in getting on the podcast, click on the link in the bio. It's the very first thing on my link tree. It says DIO questionnaire, dope individuals only questionnaire. And there you can book your podcast with me. Um, however, however, I am not 
going to take everyone who wants to get on the podcast because there is a process to it. Um, sometimes I, I, I'm, I'm gauging it off basically, you know, whether, whether I think that you fit the mold for what we're trying to build here. If you're only coming up here to, to promote your music, that's it. Maybe we can do something else on the side kind of thing. Thank you, baby, for posting it. She posted it right here below. Um, but maybe we can do something on the side. Um, but my podcast is primarily for um, spreading messages of positivity and love and helping people. It doesn't matter what you do, but that is the purpose of this show. Um, spreading positivity and helping one another. So, like, if you're only coming up here just to spread your name, I'm not knocking your hustle, but I want to be very clear about what my show is all about and the purpose of this show. And I don't want to lose it, um, the purpose and and the focal point of the show, um, just trying to appease to everybody. That's the one thing that I worked on a lot last year was being able to tell people no. So um, what I highly recommend is... Hit me up if you're interested in on getting on the show. Don't just go fill out the questionnaire. Um, hit me up. Let's have a little bit of a dialogue, and then we can we can get moving on the show. I just had somebody hit me up yesterday telling me he's interested in coming on the show, and I'm like, hey, what do you do? He's like, I'm a musical artist, um, and he he's he's very creative, so he's coming up on the show because I love this. Like the dude, fucking, he loves anime and like superheroes and things like that but he raps and he he takes these things that he loves like his his interests and his muses and he turns them into music like it's cool as shit it's the most it's and he sounds like no one else you know what I mean shit like that like even though he's a musician he's he's spreading that you don't only got to rap about big titties bitches and cars you know what I'm saying like you can rap about whatever you want. And he has a bigger following than I do, you know, but this is somebody who wants to be a part of what we're building here because he likes what he sees. He believes in what he sees. He believes in what he hears, you know. So uh, big shout out to him. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. We had a conversation for the first time, but if he's watching, I know he knows I'm talking about him. But you'll see him up here sometime next month. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, it feels so good to be back. Um, I've gotten a lot of inquiries. Shout out to everybody that hit me up because they heard me on the radio. Big shout out to, uh, uh, Lau radio, big shout out to Lau radio, man. Um, they've been very helpful in promoting my wife and our, um, uh, my wife's business, well, our business and, um, our childcare business. And I'm the first podcast they ever put on the radio station. So I've been having people hit me up. Yo, it was that you on the radio, dope, dope individuals on the radio. And it's cool as shit. It's cool as fuck. Having people hit me up like, yo, I heard you on the radio or messaging me and things like that. Like I'm greatly appreciative. If you hear me on the radio and you can catch it, record a small video and send it to me or post it on your social media. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like anything to help Anything to help uh, spread the show, spread what we do here, spread what we're all about. And I'll make sure I give you a shout out on a post or on the podcast, whatever the case may be. I'm greatly appreciative for all the love and support that I've been getting, um, that the show has been getting, all the interest that the show has been getting. And for all the people helping me along, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd love to sit here, even though it's just me talking to you all today. <clears throat> I'd love to sit here and say that, hey, it's all me. It's not. It's not. This shit really takes a village. Like right now, right behind me, this banner is being held up by my wife's photography equipment. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't. I, you know, like I didn't got equipment. Uh, I, when I first tried to find out how to start a podcast, I went on YouTube and I found this awesome video of a starter kit. That's where I got these microphones from, like people sharing their tools and their resources and things like that to help me along. People coming up on the show that probably can get on bigger podcasts than what I got here, but they rather spend their time talking to me than somebody else. You know, like I'm greatly, like I can't even express in words. All I can say is I'm so appreciative because there was a time where like I contemplated doing this for a very long time and I never jumped. I never jumped into the water because like, I'm like, why would anybody listen? What am I going to talk about? Who am I, who's going to want to be a part of this? And you know, they always say the hardest step to take is the first. But once you get the first and you get the ball rolling, people come along. It's, it's funny. Life got a funny way of putting people 
in 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 your life or on your path that are that are there to help you along the way. Some of them, yes, some of them are there to test you. Some of them are there to uh, to tear you down to see how you're going to respond to adversity. Um, but a lot of the people that have been put on my path have been very helpful in this whole ordeal. You know what I mean? And this thing is only going to get bigger and it's only going to get better. The production is going to get better. The conversations are going to get better. Um, the guests are going to continue to be fucking dope because <laughs> you're not getting better than dopeness. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, so there was a, there was a couple, uh, there was a couple great things that happened last year, especially toward the end of the year. Um, I had a lot of anxiety about coming on this podcast today. I was supposed to be my man, um, Hassan, uh, Fetty to Don, big shout out. He was supposed to be on today. We had a scheduling mix up. He'll be on sometime next week. Um, so I was supposed to have a guest for the first podcast back, but actually I'm kind of glad, I'm kind of glad things worked out the way that they did because, um, it, it, it feels right being the first podcast, just me for the year to, to bring in the new year, to, uh, bring in a revitalized, uh, podcast with all this new energy I'm bringing into this year. So it, it definitely feels good to be, uh, be up here by myself. Um, but we back to it next week with the guests. Like I said, my man, Fetty Don coming up here. He's going to put you guys on, uh, Fetty done been through a lot in life. You know what I'm saying? And he's rebuilding himself and, and there's always room for, um, on this podcast for people who face adversity and pull themselves out of a hole. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, th- that's the type of shit that I, I want to spread messages of, of perseverance and hope and, you know what I mean? And, and fortitude, um, because that's what that's what life is all about. You know, you, you got to build those skills. You got to build that mental toughness. You got to build that thick skin. You got to build um, the the not living in fear. You know what I'm saying? Because um, life has a great way of knocking you down and setting you back and it can really discourage a person if they don't got the right voices in their ear telling them that, yo, you strong, you built for this. This is what you do. This is who you are. And this is what this show is all about. Letting people know this is what you do. This is who you are. You dope. And even though life knocks you down, we climb back up, baby. We climb. That's it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud of the show. I'm very proud of everybody who had a hand in, in making all this possible. Um, I want to give a couple of shout outs, big shout out to my wife, big shout out to my kids, big shout out to loud radio, big shout out to my mother, big shout out to all the people that have been on the show up until this day, big shout out to everybody who wants to be on the show, um, this upcoming year. Um, this year we are definitely doing it. We are definitely doing it. We are going to have the Dope Individuals Only podcast cookout. We are going to have the Dope Individuals cookout this year. Um, I'm going to start setting this shit up probably next month because, like I said, we're up to like 40 episodes, you know what I'm saying? And almost all of them, maybe except maybe like 10 our guest episode so right there we got like 30 people you gotta think they got kids they gonna bring their kids they got women or or men in their life they gonna bring their partners and things like that so um but we're definitely gonna do it we're gonna we're gonna really set the tone this show is is also about networking you know what i'm saying i've connected people on this that have been on this show in separate episodes and i've connected them in their real life and they go to church together or they chill or they text you know what i'm saying they exchange resources you know what i'm saying so um I want to, I want to, I want to do that tenfold. So we're going to have people from the earliest fucking episodes that I plan on trying to get out to the cookout and things like that. And like I said, I'm going to start planning it next, uh, next month. Um, I'm going to start sending invites out and everything like that, structuring everything. So people know that we're going to be doing this. Honestly, it's probably going to be somewhere around my birthday, which is June 23rd. So be somewhere like the week before the week after, but we're going to make it fucking happen. It has to happen has to happen um all right so the next thing i want to touch on is i know y'all been watching football i know y'all been watching football i've been wanting to talk about football for mad long i've been asking my friends yo y'all want to come up to the podcast chop it up they're like i don't do cameras just this and that um what about my eyes what about my eyes i don't i don't i don't get what the eyes mean baby Oh, you what you you really want to get on? Okay, let's see. Go live with Karma D. Let me talk. <laughs> My wife wants to jump on the live. I I just tried to add you. It didn't let it didn't let me add you. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> Here she is. I'm gonna move the microphone a little bit closer. 
What happened to you coming on? You didn't. You didn't. You didn't want to be. You didn't want to be the rebound. So I told. I sent you the questionnaire, so you could fill out the questionnaire and pick a date because you wanted to fill out the questionnaire. Don't don't brush your shoulders off. Did she brushing her shoulders off? I don't appreciate none of this. Hold on. I want. I want to show. I want to show this since it's gonna be on YouTube. This is look. My my wife. My wife is is on the live talking shit right now. <laughs> It is live. We are live. <laughs> yeah, I know. I told you I was coming home to work. Yes. I was invited. I thought I was coming for an appointment. Hi, Isabel. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, listen, fill out the questionnaire. Okay, I will. Don't give me time. Don't give me time. I want to be an open Yo, yo. Listen, listen, listen. If if. If you really want to get on today, we can still make it happen. We can do it later tonight. I won't take down none of the equipment, and, and, we, can, and we can make it happen. Right. You know what we should do, honestly? We, we used to, my wife and I, we used to run a podcast, uh, like a, it's like a, I don't even know how to, a mini series, I guess. It was kind of like a podcast, but it was, <laughs> I don't know what to, I don't know how to categorize it. Um, yeah, we used, we used to have like our own show where we gave couples advice and things like that. We should do it on that one. We should do it on that platform. No, we could do dope. And, oh my God! You know what? Bye, Diana. Get off my get off. I'm kicking. I'm kicking you out. Bye. I love you. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> you love a pity party. Bye. <laughs> The the picnic idea is is gonna be great. That's, that's gonna be pretty awesome. I just can't wait to eat. You can't wait to. Eat. I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna be on the grill for everybody who don't know I can grill. You know what I'm saying I'm nice. I I I learned I learned from the greatest, Mister 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 Carlton Pamplin, my my grandfather Carlton Pamplin himself. I learned from the from the goat himself. <laughs> All right, bye. So I can get back to the podcast. Mwah, I love you too, baby. All right, so, <laughs> so where was I? So, so football. So if you if you watch sports, nine times out of ten, you do some to some type of like fantasy. For us, we do fantasy football all year, all year since before the draft. I've been telling my boys, "Yo, this is my year. I'm gonna win this shit." And I'll be honest. I was just walking in blind faith, blind faith. I started the year off hot. First six weeks, I was five and one, sitting at the top of the charts, sitting comfortable, talking shit in the chat, everything. I told y'all, Nick, I told y'all, this is my year, dog. Oh, I haven't won a championship in maybe like eight years, seven, eight years. It's been a minute. Um, I'm feeling like Aaron Rodgers out here, but... It's been a minute. So so they, they all do that to me. Oh, it's been them old-ass rings. You got to blow the dust off them rings. Mind you, like, half the league has never even won one. I only got one, but I was like, this is the fucking year. I'm getting another one. We're getting two this year. I mean, we going to make it two this year. So get to week six, five and one, talking my shit. Bro, I went on a seven-game losing streak. Oh, my God. A total fucking collapse. I was like, I got my ass whooped in the bye weeks. I was doing so bad in the bye weeks. I let a couple couple close ones slip away. Like I ended up, I ended up finishing the season out six and eight. But I made the fucking playoffs somehow. Big shout out to my man Ree. Ree told me he helped me. I'm not entirely sure how, but I guess he helped me. Whatever. But big shout out to Ree. Um, even though I beat his ass the last game to even give me that six win to even have a chance. But apparently that final week of the regular season, I lost and he won. And because of that, I got in or some shit like that. So big shout out to my man, Kyrie. Um, but I got in, but I'm the eighth seed. And my man, Frank, he won the he won the championship last year. So he'd been talking his shit all year. His team was nice. He got he, he was like an 11 win team or some crazy shit like that. Um, but he was talking mad shit. But the one thing I realized is the more shit you talk 
the more unconfident you get to me. I don't know if it's that they're actually unconfident and they're talking a big game. Frank salty as fuck. Um, but I'm not sure if, like if they're actually unconfident and they're just talking a big game to put on a face or like what I'm sensing is real. Like they do that shit because they're unconfident. But um, Frank was talking mad shit. And I was like, Frank, I'm going to beat you, bro. Oh, your team's this, your team's that. Jamar chased this, Jamar chased that, blah, blah, blah. Came out, I beat the shit out of Frank. The worst one seed ever in our fantasy league. Beat the dog shit out of Frank. Get the fuck out of my lobby. Get out of my lobby, bro. Frank was sick. Frank was sick. Frank didn't even come back in the chat for five days. He said, the first match is back with something along the lines. I have nothing to say to Eric, but for the rest of you guys, I'm on y'all asses. So he knew not to come. You, listen, you aim high when you come for the God. You know what I'm saying? Frank learned that shit the hard way. Frank learned that shit the hard way this year. You never, you never talk shit to a man that is so fucking confident and just walks in faith. Like, I've been telling niggas, I, I manifested this shit. I've been telling people that shit all year. I manifested this shit. Come out, beat the shit out of Frank. My boy Cam, Cam didn't want to have to play me. For some reason, Cam knew that if he had to play me, he was going to lose. Because he wanted to play Frank so fucking bad. He was like, Frank, beat Eric. Blah, blah, blah. He's the eighth seed. Talking all that caca. Next week, killer Cam. Killer Cam, that's his name, Killer Cam. Killer Cam for what? Nigga killed himself. Beat the dog shit out of Cam. Beat that. I beat Cam worse than I beat Frank. And then he gonna hit me up. GG's, all oh, this, this, and that happened. Listen, I'm not trying to hear none of them fucking excuses, bro. I'm the AFC. I came in here with a losing record. Y'all didn't believe in your boy, even though I've been telling you all year that I was gonna win the championship. Bro, kick kick rocks. Kick rocks. But Cam wasn't talking shit to me. So I let Cam li live. However, one thing I want to say to Cam. Cam, two weeks before the playoffs started, I was getting my ass whooped by Kyrie. This is the game I beat Kyrie in. I was getting my ass whooped by Kyrie. By like, no lie. I went to bed and I was down f like 38 points, bro. I had, I believe, one player to play left. And I'm pretty sure it was Jamar. Ch no, I had two players. I had Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon on my team. I had two. But I'm down like damn near four. It was closer to 40 points. Yo, I went to bed. He's like, GG's black. That's what he called me because he, he think he's funny. I wake up. Next day, come along. They start playing. I'm like, you know what? Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I'm not going to stress over it. It is what it is. I don't watch none of the game until the fourth quarter. I get a text message from Kyrie talking about, damn, black, GGs. <laughs> Go get them. <laughs> I ain't never seen a person be so sad because they took an L after talking so much shit. But the big thing was when I was getting my ass whooped by Kyrie, the day before that Bengals game when their backup quarterback went crazy. Jamar Chase went crazy. Joe Mixon went crazy. Killer, uh, Cam was like, yo, our, our fantasy chat is gay as shit. My friends be saying some real suspect shit in this, in this fantasy chat. What's good, Preem? What's good, Preem? Fuck it. My, my friends be saying some wild shit in his chat. So Cam goes... Yo, Kyrie, don't do him so dirty. You got to save some for me. And it was a gay joke attached to it. I'm not even going to get into it because they say some wild shit. I don't even feel, feel right repeating. But this one comment sprawled a like a two-hour conversation of everybody telling me how they're going to do me dirty, but in the gayest way possible. And... Yo, I was like, I was like, I don't even know what to say back to any of these things. I just kept like, kept like trying to be positive because I, I really did not know how to respond to any of this. And they're like, all my friends, the running joke in my friend group is, what's good, Rich? Yo, we are going to be at your wedding this year. We are going to be at your wedding. Shit, I wasn't supposed to tell you that. Matter of fact, no, nah, I didn't book anything yet, though. So maybe. <laughs> um, but. 
So so yeah, um this sprawled like a two hour like roasting session on me. And the running joke is in, in our friend group is that I tell jokes like a 70 year old man. And it's not even fun to joke with me because my comebacks sound like sound like old man comebacks because like I, I bro, I, I speak wisdom like even 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 if I'm talking shit, like if you're like, yo, I'm going to dog you this weekend. I'm like, bro, you. You can't, you can't kill the king. You know what I'm saying? Like, or I'll say some weird shit like that. Like, but it's just the way that I respond to certain things. And they're like, yo, it's not even fun to talk shit to you. So I'm like, I'm, I'm giving them those type of comments. And they're saying all this wild gay shit to me and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I made a decision. I was like, I'm going to do everybody dirty when I get into the playoffs. I sneak into the playoffs. I do Frank dirty. I, the next week. Cam is scared of me. I, I could tell it. I, like, he wrote me the day before the match and like yada, yada, yada. Remind me what he's going to do. Not even worry about it. Get out of my inbox. Beat Cam's ass. Now I'm in a championship game. Now it's me and Brandon. Brandon might be arguably the gayest one in the group. I'm not sure. It's him or Frank. But these niggas, they be wilding in this chat, bro. So I know not to I know not to really talk shit with Brandon because like he's gonna say some stuff like that I don't even know how to respond to it and it's gonna look like he wins the argument so I don't even get into none of that it's it, it's it's beneath me at this point but my boy Kyrie hits us up the day before the playoffs um the the playoff game start last Sunday and he's like yo how do you guys want to do this it's a um he's like win or take all, or we could do a thousand dollars for first place and 250 for second place. I'm like, win or take all. I'm fucking confident. There's listen, there's no reason why I should even be in a championship game. I was six and eight. I was six and eight. How can I not? How can I not just say, give me all my fucking money, bro, because I'm going to win this shit. So fucking confident. Brandon agreed. Win or take all. It is what it is. The games start. I'm at, it's a couple hours before the games. And I'm having a really hard time picking my lineup. The week before, Kenneth Walker got knocked out of the game. Um, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, so do I play him? Because he spent the whole week on the injury report. So it made me nervous because, like, if I start a dude and he get knocked out of the game, I'm asked out. I'm not getting no points from nobody. So I leave him on my bench and I start Jamar Chase. The one time I question myself and I make a decision out of fear I lost the fucking game <laughs> I fucking lost the Jamar Chase gave me five points Kenneth Walker ended up getting knocked out of the game so I wasn't completely wrong but he gave me 15 had I had had I taken Jamar Chase out and put um and put Kenneth Walker in his place I would have won the game because I lost by 10 points I lost by 10 points and he gave me 10 points that I could have used to win that fucking game. So, listen, I say all of that to say don't make decisions based out of fear. Trust your gut. Believe in yourself. Believe in the things that got you there. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust yourself. Because when you make decisions out of fear, you, you only fuck yourself at the end of the day, honestly. Um, so, big shout out to my man, Brandon. He ended up winning our main league and our backup league. I run a backup league that's pretty popular. And he won both them bitches. This nigga won $1,700. And one night from fantasy football, I, he's the first one to ever do it. I have, I have nothing but kudos to give to my guy. So the, the buy-in is, the buy-in is, I believe, a buck twenty-five. Yeah, $125 is our buy-in for our fantasy league. So I lost $125. I would have won $1,250 had I won the game, but I didn't win. Um, so, yeah, next year, next year. I'll be back next year. Um, yo, confidence, confidence is so important when you do anything, even if even if you don't know how you're going to get there. Like I said, I was 6 and 8. I probably, there was people, there wasn't people with better records, but there were people with better teams. But, you know, I had I had this this blind faith that I was gonna do the impossible this year, and six and eight I shouldn't have been in the playoffs. I shouldn't have beat the one seed. I shouldn't have beat the three seed. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, but I did. So believe in yourself, be confident in whatever you do and, and don't make decisions based out of fear. Carry that shit into to everything, not just like fantasy football and shit like that. Carry that into everything because um, what, what you focus on, if you're focused on I'm going to win, I'm going to win, I'm going to win, even if you take some L's in the process. I took eight losses and only won six times during the regular season, but it, it didn't matter. Because when we got into the playoffs, I won the games that I had to, except the championship game, which I lost by 10 points. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's that's my fantasy review. But the other thing I wanted to talk about sports-wise was my Philadelphia Eagles. I'm so fucking sick and tired of Eagles fans. I'm sick and tired of Eagles fans. The Eagles are much like myself this year for fantasy. I've been saying that I'm going to win the championship and the Eagles are going to win the championship. And even though, I, as a fan, as an objective football fan, not just an Eagles fan, a football fan, the Eagles have to clean up a lot of things. I think our biggest issue is our coaches. Our coaches seem like they're a little out of their league some of these games. Like last week, they're trying to get the right personnel package, and the time's ticking away. And you can hear the players in the huddle screaming to the sideline, we need Stoll, we need Stoll, Jack Stoll, the backup um, tight end. And nobody, and they keep sending fucking um, uh, Julio Jones onto the field. You know what I mean? It's like it's things like that where it's like you guys kind of seem like you're a little out of your league. Um but I don't think people should lose faith. I know we haven't looked good the past six weeks, maybe five, six weeks. I understand that. I agree. I also think that we shouldn't have lost some of those games. We shouldn't have lost to the Cardinals. Um, damn sure we shouldn't have lost to the Cardinals. We shouldn't have lost a couple of those games that we lost. Um, beat the, the 49ers beat the shit out of us. The Cowboys beat the shit out of us. You know, like, we, and when we lost, we lost bad. So I get why people are disheartened and things like that. But, like, everybody's, like, ready to go scorched earth. At the end of the day, people forget we have the hardest schedule, the hardest schedule in the NFL. The Cowboys had the 30th. There's only 32 NFL teams. They had the 30th 30th hardest schedule in the league, which means that there were only two teams with easier schedules I mean, we're harder schedules than them. Everybody else had easier schedules. And the 49ers had the ninth easiest schedules. There's only, there's only like what? I think 12 teams that make the playoffs. If you got nine teams that are ahead of you as far as strength of schedule, there's a very good chance you're going to be a really good team. Even, even though you have, and especially if you have as many weapons as like the 49ers do. Especially if you have as many weapons as the Cowboys do, you're gonna be a good team nine times out of ten. Like unless your 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 quarterback is absolute caca and your coaching staff is absolute caca, you're probably gonna be okay just simply based off your opponents. We have the hardest schedule in the NFL. Not only that, we're coming off a Super Bowl appearance. Not only that, we have beat multiple teams with winning records. We beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs, even though they lost a couple close ones the past couple weeks, the Chiefs are still the Chiefs solely because Pat Mahomes. You can never count them out. Even though the receivers dropped the most passes in the NFL, you still cannot count them out because they have such an amazing quarterback and the best tight end probably in NFL history. You can't count the Cowboys out. Even though they blow big games, they had the 30th easiest schedule in the NFL. You cannot discount that. Who you face matters. Who you face matters. Not only that, they're a really good home team. But we beat them too. You know what I'm saying? We beat the Bills. The Bills came out and smacked the Cowboys in the face the other week. A couple weeks back, the Bills didn't even look like a playoff caliber team to some people. However, however, when you watch them play the Eagles in that game, they could have easily won that game. They could have. They fucked up and we capitalized on their mistakes. So... Even even when they were losing, they were on that like a three game losing stretch or something like that. They were still a good team, and they have arguably the second best quarterback in the league in Josh Allen. You cannot count that out. And they have an organization that has been really good over the past four to five years. And the team is pretty much still the same. All the key pieces are still there. So you know, like we we beat teams like that. Um, 
I'm pretty sure we played the Lions as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we beat some quality football teams. But since it was early in the year, people think that, oh, like those were flukes or something. Listen, it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. We're an 11-win football team. Even if we lost a couple. Even if we lose in a couple days against the Giants. We're still in the playoffs. When you get in the playoffs, it's a whole different game. It's the best of the best. You show up, you know, you know there is no next week to clean it up. They they're NFL, they're professional athletes. They understand this. You do not have to lecture them on how to do their job. You know how many people play in the NFL? Very, very few. There's like 5,000 people in the NFL. That's it. That's it. Out of all the out of all the little league programs, middle school, high school, college programs, division, and we're not even we're just talking about the top of the top. We're not even talking about division two, II, division three. We're not talking about JUCO colleges. None, none of that shit. Just think about all those players in totality. How many people play fucking football every single year? Millions and millions and millions of kids, teenagers, and young men play football every year. And only about five thousand of them get to go and play at the highest level. We do not need to tell these people how to do their fucking jobs. And if you think you can do their jobs, why are you not on the TV on Sunday and we're not watching you? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can be, we can be critical of our teams, but at the same time, it's like, we don't really know. We don't really know what these people got to go through, what the, what the locker room is like. Like, we get reports. We get, we get phantom statements from unknown sources. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I want to say, I say all this to say, for Eagles fans out there, for Eagles fans out there, do not lose hope. We are an 11-win football team. We are definitely going to the playoffs. And when you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. If you ask anybody that's a Giants fan, the two Super Bowls that they got within the last two decades, they were the very last seed, and they started in the wild card game. And they went on twice to beat the best team of the decade, the Patriots. You can't count nobody out. Eagles fans, we have been witness to some of the most amazing comebacks in NFL history when shit looked impossible. So how can we lack faith at a time when we know we will get at least one appearance to show what type of football team we are in the playoffs? Call me, call me, call me whatever. Call me naive. Call me stupid. Tell me I don't think I know what I'm talking about. Whatever. But we got an opportunity. And that's all you need. You need the opportunity. Had we not had an opportunity, different conversation. But we have an opportunity. So, you know, we we all just got to, we all got to honestly pray that our team our team looks more like the team the first eight weeks of the year than the last eight weeks of the year. Um, because I, I don't like everything that I've seen, but our team didn't just forget how to play football. They didn't. Maybe, maybe they got a little – maybe they got a, away from the things that they know they're good at, but our team did not l- forget how to play football. So, you know, leave that out. For all the players out there, I, I don't, if you're listening um, – all the Eagles players, stop making fucking statements. If you've ever been a part of a team, the worst thing you can do is start spreading rumors and and gaslighting when the focus needs to be on restructuring um, the work environment and 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 rebuilding the camaraderie that was once there. Not 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 being divisive and telling people quotes, but hey, don't don't put my name in there unless you're willing to stand on it. Shut the fuck up. That's my personal take. Eagles fans, we are going to the Super Bowl. Eagles fans, we are going to win the Super Bowl. Eagles fans, we are going to the Super Bowl. Eagles fans, we are going to win the fucking Super Bowl. And I know it doesn't look like it right now, but we have an opportunity and we are going to seize that motherfucker. Mark my words. There we go. All right. And the last thing I want to touch on, man, is this podcast is going to go through a lot of growth this year. And I don't know what the growth is going to look like. 
I got an idea and I have ideas of how I want it to grow, but they say God laugh at you when you make plans. So I'm going to continue to plan, but I know I'm going to hear some laughter at some point. However, um, it's going to be a big year. 2024 is going to be a big year. This show is going to take off this year. My book is dropping at the end of this month and is going to be taking off. I plan on finishing my second book, which is called The Elder Woman. Um, that is going to be coming out probably next year, but um, I will be keeping you guys updated throughout the year on that. Um, and I just started dropping music again. For all the people who don't know, um, I'm going through a rebrand. It's a light rebrand right now until I can get the money in, in order so I can start um, pushing the music a little bit differently than I did in the past. Um, but my artist name is Isaiah Kyrie. Not Kyre, not whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's Isaiah Kyrie. And the name comes from um, my middle name is Isaiah and Kyrie is Eric Backwards. So K I R E E R I K. So, you know what I'm saying? Like Isaiah Kyrie. I've got two new songs out on SoundCloud. Um they're dope. <laughs> they're dope. One's called Lil Homie. Um, that's my shit. You don't want no problems, Lil Homie. Um, and then the other one is a soulful RB track, which I absolutely love. I showed this song to so many people. And everybody's like, this song is absolute fire. So I'm hoping to uh, get some music videos done soon in the near future. Uh, I already started chopping it up with my man, Mr. We Live TV, Sticky Money. Uh, big shout out to him. He was on the show. If you haven't checked out his episode, make sure you go check it out. Um, but yeah, so so we got a lot of things in motion this year. Make sure y'all stay up to date on the podcast. Make sure you uh, follow me here, um, Dope Individuals Pod. Make sure you follow me on TikTok. TikTok, uh, Dope Individuals Pod. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Dope Individuals Only Podcast. I mean, on YouTube, Dope Individuals Only Podcast. Make sure you follow the show on Spotify and Apple Music to stay up to date on what's going on. Um, Instagram is my primary hub, so make sure that you guys are following me on Instagram to stay up to date. Um, that link tree link in the bio, make sure y'all click it if y'all want to find anything, whether it's music, poetry, um, my store, the DIO, um, the Dope Individuals Only Questionnaire if you're interested in getting on the show, um, YouTube page, all of it. If you want to find anything that has to do with me and my creative endeavors, that's where you find it. That is where you can find everything. I want to thank y'all for showing up. I want to thank y'all for listening. Uh, make sure y'all share this video with somebody for all the people that jumped in the live. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to be doing more lives this year on here than on TikTok because um, my 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 fan group, the local fan group is on, on uh, Instagram. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot more. I'm going to I'm going to go back and forth between this and TikTok. So make sure y'all stay tuned. Um, I will also be letting you guys know when I'm going live ahead of the time. And I will actually be going live. Last year, I had a tough time between, oh, I'm going live. And then I'll be 30 minutes late or, you know what I'm saying, go through technical yeah. difficulties. So that is something that is going to be improved this upcoming year, um, as you can see, and things like that. So make sure y'all stay tuned. A whole lot of dope shit with more dope videos on the way. Make sure you shoot for the moon. If you miss, you're still amongst the motherfucking stars. Happy 2024, baby. Thank you guys for watching. I love y'all. Make sure y'all follow the show. Peace. I've been on my grind just to live it out. Say what's on your mind just to hear it loud. Everybody knows me, really that's the old me Going through some changes right here and now